Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how much of, of the Gate Watch I decided to buy. I know I did not make that video previously. I decided to just buy Fat Packs again. Uh, it works out pretty well. I think the Fat Packs, if we spend about like 5K, which is about the amount that you have to spend to get the lowest price point available at that distributor, then about, uh, I think 1,000, 1,200 of it can be in Fat Packs and the rest will be in boxes. And that's just the ratio. You can't have it all in fat packs. Now, my friends have no interest in fat packs. They never had an interest in fat packs. And the primary reason is they can head out and we can play. Like I explained this again, fat packs would be perfect item to play with friends because they come with lands. So you can bring this fat pack, which is very carryable. Like you can carry it to your car. You can, after you open it, it actually becomes much, much smaller. And it's one of the best, in my opinion, if you're interested in having like a party or having friends over, fat packs are amazing because you got nine packs. You can do sealed with six of them and then you can have a prize pool with the other three packs and that's gonna be a payout. And you have lands and that's probably the most important part because I always don't have lands, right? No one, like if you go to like a bar or a restaurant or whatever, or a friend's house, maybe they don't have your lands and that would suck because no one can play it. No one can draft, no one can do sealed because you're on land. So fat packs in my, opinion are just very very good for hanging out with friends to play with. I prefer fat packs over you know boost box definitely over boost boxes just because again okay let's say you go to a party everyone splits a boost box and then you have cards how are you going to take them home like and then you put in your car which happens a lot and then you drive around and <laughs> hit a stop sign and all the cards come flying out and you know this is like okay this is a mess. So fat packs, definitely one of the better uh, things I wanna kind of put money into right now. I did pay full retail and a lot of times I'll do this. I'll pay full retail for things I want uh, to support the store. And I primarily do it when the store is, I understand the store is having a hard time. And both my stores are not having the easiest time, uh, mainly because it's tax season and they realize how much money they lost. So I have no problem paying, I think it was $40 for a fat pack and I have 18 of them. It's like, how much is that? But anyway, I paid around $1,180. Um, I also have various uh, singles and booster boxes. You always have booster boxes. I think there's one here that I opened already. Uh, Pre-release pre kits are also very interesting because they cost about 20 a piece. And I like that the fact that one of them is foil, like that seems like additional value. But the problem with pre-release kits, as you will know, not all of them are, I mean, I, I don't know if this is a, a problem, uh, this is kind of a nice problem to have, it is out of every pre-release kit, four of them will be Oaf, and then two of them will be Battle. And if you're primarily just interested in opening Oaf, pre-release kit's probably not the best route to go with in terms of that. But yeah, you do get a foil promo, and I've always enjoyed that. Battle pre-release kits, I love. That thing, that makes a lot of sense to me. You get six battle packs and then you get like a bonus. For 20 bucks, that's pretty much the same pack price as a booster box in many, many places. So back to uh, how much it was. It was a few boxes. I think it was like a case. I want to say it was a case and then 18 fat packs of that, that math adds up right. As well as um, a few pre-release kits and things of that nature. And the stores, so having a store is really difficult, at least in this area, because your customer base is always after the lowest price. They will always order online, and that's tip. That's fine. I agree with that. I get that. But at the same time, you know, it's a place that you can meet your friends. It's a place that you can hang out, and I will fund it because I have the resources to fund it. And it's not like I'm... I guess the way I look at it is you have different patrons on into a store, kind of like Groovy Geckos back in Williamsburg. And some patrons will never buy anything, and that's fine. Some patrons will buy more. They will buy a lot of stuff. And the reason they're buying a lot of stuff is because they like the community, and they will bring up the entire community, and they will support the store. So I used to buy boxes at uh, Groovy Geckos for $120, which is like way above what I needed to pay online at the time. I remember this was way back when. So it was the time it was like 80 bucks a booster box uh, worth shipping from like pretty much any online vendor. But I would pay 120, not because I'm an idiot or anything, because that supports the store 
and pays the rent and that stuff. So in this case, I didn't ask for a discount, although I've always been able to, and I can still now, uh, mainly because I knew and from like talking that the uh, events, the pre-release events went extremely poorly. So a place that normally has 60 or 70 people had nine people and of the nine people, the store paid, I think this is, I don't know if this is true. The store paid those nine people to play or gave them like a huge discount off pre-release, something like that. So I know the store is, um, it's not the moment in time that I need to grill the store for like a few dollars, right? So anyway, I paid full retail, which is fine to me. Uh, 40 bucks a fat pack, I think like a hundred bucks a box, um, all of it in cash, of course. So I'm pretty happy with um, what I'm spending on it. I think Over the Gate Watch is a very good set. I like it a ton. And I recommend you guys actually open some of it because there's lots of actually, the rares, there's the cards, at least right now, as of this recording, more than $10. And that's something that you cannot say about Battle. I think Battle has, what's the most expensive rare in Battle? It's, it's pretty much Gideon, Ogamog, Yugamog, or Bust. That, that's it. I mean, it's a terrible set. Like, it's a terrible, it is not interesting, it is not valuable in any sense of the word. Uh, Battle is just a very low EV set outside the Expeditions, of course. But Oath, I see its value going tremendously down, but as right now, within the first month of opening, I think it's worth it. Like, I think it's definitely worth it. Plus, I'm preparing for GP Houston, so I need to open some stuff anyway. And... I guess we'll open it on this channel if you guys want. Bye, guys.